young 17 year old uh, to make a play here for her first top flight result on the euro cup tour now we work through the starting order to see those faster skiers uh, lila lapagna the one and only american in the race is definitely in the shootout as is uh, charlie guest uh, sixth quickest after the first run point seven seven off the pace but the lady to beat is uh, leona popovich who was exceptional on the first run let's see how she deals with the conditions on the second now i am delighted to have the former world cup winner olympian and now head of admissions at the apex ski academy brit yannick uh, join me in the commentary box as the expert analyst for this second leg uh Varovic is out on course brit first points from you on the course set from the austrian uh, where the pace and uh, tempo looks equally as quick as the first leg, but I think it's the breakaway to the steep pitch that will be the make or break of the second leg. Your thoughts? Yeah, we'll have a look at how it's set here. So there's a right-footed delay gate as she came over, so perhaps we won't see as many errors, but that's a change in timing and rhythm as you transition into the steep section. So it's going to still continue to be a very key part of this course in keeping your speed to the finish. Now, uh, taking full advantage of the smooth, clean track and her coach setting the second leg, it is uh, Varovic that uh, sets the uh, early pace here. And uh, total time over the two legs at... Uh, 131.93. Now, uh, Mijares Ruf of um, Andorra or Spain. Andorra, it is. My apologies. Uh, the young Andorran skier is uh, out on track. Again, it's uh, relatively smooth and uncut. This piece now really must take advantage looking for that second run charge. It's a good quick tempo here in the opening turns. We saw that in the first run, so really important to build speed across the flats and be ahead of the rhythm. And there we can see how it really swings. It's a bit wider set, so more of a turn in the steep pitch. And she was just getting caught on the heels ever so slightly, but she managed to recover well and get back in front of the skis. Around the dog leg turn into the closeout. Misses top position by 0.22. Austria still hold the early lead. Target time and total over the two legs, 131.93. Lovely reverse camera angle there. Uh, she, seeing the Andorra and just get uh, the skis accelerated a little too quickly in front of her and caught on the tails. Uh, Jenny Meichler for Switzerland. Next ad on track. Uh, Janine, 27th after the first run. Yeah, just some slightly bigger turns there. She's really finding the rhythm well. It's picking up the turn, setting that edge early, and then committing to it and moving quick into the next turn. There's a quick rhythm change with that combination there in the middle of the flats. And it's this right-footed delay that brings you into the steep pitch. It's these gates here that just swing across the hill a little bit more than they did in the first run. Yeah, it's good words, Britt. That under gate really does help them. Uh on this uh, second run challenge rather than the first. It was almost a blind gate diving down the steep. Uh, the banana makes it a little easier. Michael goes into second position. And uh, this lady who took a silver medal at the World Juniors last year, uh, only uh, 18 years of age, starting to come on very strongly uh, with her form and confidence this season. But it's uh, Varushitz that uh, still leads for Austria. 17-year-old uh, holding top position. But we work our way through to the quicker skiers from 27th position after the first run. This is Moa Bustram musna Again, another very talented racer. She's put World Cup points down in her career to date with a 17th position PB. Coming back from injury and looking stronger, fitter and more confident, Brit, with every race that she skis this year. Yeah, she really is. Thinking back to the first run, this is already a different skier this second run. More confidence across the flats, and that's you can see it how she's moving very quick with the ankles and knees into the new turn and really taking her speed from one turn to the next. Good rhythm. 
good tight I like the accuracy with the footwork come around the corner another very well set undergate from the Austrian coach we have a new leader Burström Musner from Sweden and that's a healthy lead as well 0.59 of a second error free from top to bottom for me Brit. Yeah, she really was. She transitioned well from the flats to the steeps, which is a really key part of this course, this race hill here in, uh, in Melbourne. Let's go to Belgium. Kim Van Roosel, 24 year old, four years of age. She's a good all-rounder, Kim. Uh, she was 30th in the Olympic downhill of Pyeongchang in 2018. But in the World Championships of 2021, 29th in the slalom. Uh, she, I think she trains out of the Club de Sport in team, I do believe. But uh, a good, talented all-rounder, the Belgium number one. Well, and she has the highest number that moved into the top 30, so I'm excited to see how she matches up against our new leader. The times are stacked pretty tight between these athletes from the first run. That's a very nice rhythm down that wider set, steep pitch. I like this. Yeah, I like those words, Britt. You're absolutely on point. She's got a lovely wide stance that allows her to load the ski with acceleration. 0.24. That's tough for Kim Van Roosel. But she's definitely, for me, the warrior of the day. Bib number 66 after the first run, all the way into the points on the second leg. That is a good day in the office for the Belgium all-rounder. Another skier that we've seen on the World Cup Tour this season on numerous occasions is Germany's Jessica Hiltzinger. Now, uh, Hiltzinger, 20th and 26th in Soldeo Andorra. That was the last stop on the Women's World Cup Slalom Tour. This is the Europa Cup, the B Tour, live on Fisty to TV today and tomorrow. But Hiltzinger, just a little tentative Brit in those opening turns. She's now playing catch-up. Yeah, she is. She's very precise with her feet at the gate, but not free enough, not enough freedom and kind of rhythm with the skiing. So she's holding on to the edges ever so slightly, and that's just bleeding time off at each turn. And that release of the ski early that Britt is describing, for me, is all down to confidence. Uh, Jessica Hiltzinger not quite got the self-belief that she's looking for. That's what many of the World Cup racers use these Europa Cup competitions for, to come into a very high competitive arena and try new things, set up, mental approach. Um, and uh, that is why the Europa Cup can often produce some really exciting racing. Rosa Pojolainen for Finland, 24th position after the first run. Another youngster that's making inroads on the World Cup tour, but has been knocked back by missing most of 2023 due to injury, but she's back, back on form and looking strong and fully fit once again. Yeah, really good quick section here. That's a nice rhythm coming into that combination across the flats. I think she'll be wanting to do a little bit more here on this second run. Has to adjust with her rhythm and timing here on the steep pitch as the gates swing a little bit more left to right. So it's that adapt, you have to adapt and change your tactics as the train changes. Rosa Pojolainen, third position. Not a bad performance, just found those tight off-swing turns a little tricky. Yeah, that really was all the, the only place where she lost it, and it's ever so subtle, but it makes a big difference by the finish line. Charlotte Ling for Liechtenstein, 23rd position after the first run. Yeah, I get a really nice view of this flatter section. There's a lot of combinations set, so although the terrain looks easy, the way the course has been set will challenge the racers to adjust to the, the timing and the rhythm of the course. That it really is what slalom is all about. How quick can you move left to right and then make those tactical changes when through the combinations? Well, Charlotte's uh, scored once on the World Cup slalom tour this season, so this Europa Cup racing is important to her. 
And that is a wonderful closeout. Charlotte Ling, local heroine here, puts Liechtenstein into top position, lowers the target time by nine hundredths of a second. One minute, 31.25 is the position and she knows this race piece well and using that local knowledge to her advantage good to see host nation Liechtenstein go top of the table Congrats. Take a seat. now let's go back to Switzerland that neighbors the border of Liechtenstein along with Austria this is Selina Egloff 22nd position uh, after the first run And it's all about getting into the rhythm out of the start gate. The turns look just a little bit wider than the first run out of the start, but then it gets a little bit quicker and straighter across this kind of middle flat section. But here's the key turn. Strong on the right, ski through that delay, and then set up your timing for these bigger turns down the pitch. And this is a really good rhythm. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Britt. Confidence is what Selena is oozing here through this challenge. She's 0.51 off at the halfway mark. Let's see how she closes out and into a ninth position. That's a little frustrating. Looked nervous yeah. to me on the opening turns, but as you quite rightly pointed out, settled it from the halfway point down nicely. Maybe a bit more aggression is needed, but there's certainly a big difference between run one and run two here with this off swing. Uh, really testing the technical skills as we uh, home in on Zita Tot from uh, Hungary. Looking to take the lead away from uh, Charlotte Ling of Liechtenstein. Also put the pressure on the faster skiers that are still to come. Yeah, good skiing here. A couple little mistakes. Just watching the skis jumping off the snow ever so slightly. And we saw Charlotte Ling come down with a very clean run. She was very smooth through all the transitions and adapted well with the rhythm changes. So just would like to see Zita settle a little bit, keep the skis grounded and keep that speed driving down the hill. Yeah, great words. 0.78 Zeta Tot will be a little frustrated with that second run. She was expecting oh so much more. It's not an easy run this second leg, is it? It's uh, very difficult to judge. Some of the gates very direct and straight, others very round and technical turns. Yeah, we're definitely seeing some more rhythm changes in this second run compared to the first run. Uh, Lujon Moulin. Now, uh, Laureen, 20th quickest from the first run. Working our way through to the fastest of that leg. Opening leg earlier this morning. With that, of course, Croatia's Popovic, the one to watch. But these skiers need to take full advantage of the smooth, clean race piece. And this is a nice bit of aggressive work from uh, Laureen Lujon Moulin on the, the upper section. Yeah, she's very much in touch here. Oh, getting a little bit late. Look how quick she is on the turns, and she nearly had it. But unfortunately, that's out. A DNF. Well, no shortage of commitment from this uh, young French lady. But uh, just gets caught on the red gate, twisted with the upper body, straddles the blue. And that's a DNF on the second run for Laurine Lujon Moulin. Koraga for Austria is next on course. Into the top 20 now. 19th position. World Cup form in round eight of the Women's World Cup Slalom Tour. 21st, a career PB in World Cup competition. She's come back down to the B Tour or the Europa Cup to fine-tune those skills in preparation for the next stop on the Women's World Cup Tour. 9th and 10th, for those of you that want to make a note, in Ore, Sweden. You can watch uh, all of the action live on FIS TV or the highlights on the FIS-ski.com website. Yeah, good rhythm down here on the steep part. She's skiing this nicely and seen ahead of the course. It's going to be close by the finish line. Green light and it's 0.26 builds. So the lead for Charlotte Ling is over. We're now uh, sub-131 total time for the two legs. This is Lisa Huraga going top for Austria. New target time of 1 minute 30.99 seconds. Good skiing.
good balance as well of aggression but technical prowess now let's move on chance for France to immediately bounce back into the top three Caitlin McFarlane very impressed with uh, Caitlin's performance in Lienz round five of the women's slalom tour at top level at the World Cup where she scored 26 also a 23rd position in giant slalom I think it's fair to say Brit this lady's career is on track yeah, it really is, and fantastic energy amongst, amongst the whole French technical group, and we're seeing that here today in this in this fall. Really good recoveries there. She got a little bit late after that delay gate, but she got herself right back to the front of the skis, quick to the edges, and got the grip to bring herself back into the course. 0.81 off the pace. Caitlin McFarlane goes into sixth position. Horaga still leads for Austria. Director perfectly picks out the era where a lot of the tempo and speed was lost. There's Lisa, our new leader. Italy are next in the gate, working our way through to the quicker races. Lucrezia Lorenzi. Another skier that has yet to score on the World Cup Tour this season. But she was in the 20s on a couple of occasions last season. So, uh, Lorenzi here. Yeah, and she was second out of the gate this morning. So, perhaps, and used, not quite used to this course, it's getting a little bit cut up already, but still a very smooth track. And that's a very nice section. So precise to the gates on those bigger turns in the pitch. That's what you want to see. Gain as much out of the course as you can. Yeah, good commitment on those technical closing turns. Now she dips and dives for the line, 1.45. Well, uh, Lorenzi, for me, maybe just a little passive on that flat section where you really do need to build the speed. I love the technique here on the steep, but I think there needs to be a little more pace and tempo about the work on that top section. Here is our current leader from the Austrian team, at Lisa Choraga. Now, 16th position after the first run, taking us up to the halfway point of this second leg challenge is Elsa Fernbeck. Yeah, this is a good charge up here. Oh, a little mistake, and she's out, but she was going for it. Yeah, and I think it's all all bust for a lot of these skiers. They're looking for the podium. They're not here searching for points like the youngsters. And uh, Elsa, no shortage of commitment, but just gets caught a little low and late and is forced to straddle. And uh, her day is over on the second run. That's a shame. There's still some very talented skiers at the top of the mountain but uh, it's uh, Lisa Horaga that sets the pace in the halfway point of this second run total time of 1 minute 30.99 seconds Charlotte Ling is second uh, Bustram Musna for Sweden third Kim Van Roosel and Poja Leinen of Finland making up the top five but there are 15 skiers still to challenge and each and every one of them uh, with a pretty good advantage over Lisa Horaga for those of you that have followed the World Cup Tour, we've seen skiers win from 30th position all the way to first recently on the men's tour in Chamonix a week or so ago. But I think there's some real talent in these last 15 races and uh, talented skiers with podiums against their name on the World Cup Tour. I think Lisa will just be hoping that she can at least break into the top 15, maybe even the top 10 with that exceptional second run charge. Let's get into the second half of this race. Sunrise at Europa Cup here in Melbourne, Liechtenstein, live on FIS TV today. And uh, Aline Hoepli for Switzerland will be next in the gate. Peace condition looks good. It'll be interesting to see by the time we get to the last five, say, how that rut has formed and developed with this quite round offset technical swing that the uh, 
Austrian coach. It's a very different tempo and rhythm to the first run. Uh, Michael Rahm, I think, has had a brilliant second leg, I have to say, because the whole purpose of the Europa Cup is to test all of the skills of the slalom racer. Here we go with Hopli. Chasing Austria's Lisa Huraga. Anything below 131 will have her in a podium position. Just slightly overloading the ski there, Brit, on the upper turns, taking a little too much acceleration, getting thrown into the air. Yeah, across the flats here, it's so important to find that rhythm and stay ahead of the course. And if the pressure is happening just a little bit too late, then that's just a missed opportunity to build speed and create speed. And we really are seeing that it's two sections. Well, there's the course workers clearing out of the way just in time as she makes her way down this pitch and it'll bend around to the right and she'll have the finish line in sight. Oh, oh. and she straddles just before the dog leg that Britt was describing. And that is a real shame. Brimming with confidence from the moment she left the starting gate. Herpley, DNF on the second run. Yeah, perhaps it's just that focus right to the finish line. She knew she was close, but it's slalom. She was trying to get the skis so precise to the gates and unfortunately that's the straddle. That is a disappointment. Let's get back to the top of the racetrack. Norway are ready to rumble with uh, Andrine uh, Marstuhl. This lady's got some World Cup form against her name with a top 10 in the night slalom in Flachau. And that is a very impressive PB to hold. If you can find anything like that kind of uh, skill, she could be a threat to the Austrian leader. Focused. Little wait whilst there's a few course repairs made. A dual task here for Andrine. Yep, it's pretty clear she wants to take the lead away from Lisa Horaga, but she wants to try and put the pressure as well on the uh, 14 skiers after her. She gets the all clear from the start, Marshal. It's good to see that it's uh, tense there at the top of the slope. It's a very important race. It's an important stepping stone, the Europa Cup B-Tour, to earn your position on the World Cup Tour. We know that's the pinnacle of international competition, but it's a real pleasure to take a look inside the B-Tour and the Europa Cup here today. Many races with different agendas, some looking to build confidence, others change the equipment, some coming back from injury. But with a lot of the big stars from the World Cup Tour in action today, there's a big point score and uh, world rank points up for offer. Don't yeah, be confused by the visit. graphic, Britt. My apologies. It yeah. is Marshall, not the Italian. There we go. Now we've got it. Now she's quick in the rhythm, but I think we've seen she needs to... There needs to be a little bit more charge. She's seen this very nicely. But I just wonder if it's missing a little bit of charge. Can she change gears here down on the bottom? But that upper section is the key spot. The fastest ones at the bottom have skied that upper part very quick. Yeah, I totally agree, Britt. Just giving it a little too much respect. Maybe skiing for the result rather than the victory. Uh, Marshall, 0.37 off the pace. Uh, fourth position. Not sure the delay helped her nerves either. Can often be the case with some of the youngsters and the lesser experienced skiers. Technique solid. Replay, it all looks very good. Just not enough urgency about the work on those top turns. Now this lady likes to push it on the flatter sections. We're in bib 15, 13th after the first run. This is Martini Petalini. Now Martina. Look how accurate she is with the feet. Five point scores on the Women's World Cup Tour from nine races so far this season. Yeah, very smooth and clean on this opening section because she can get the edge, set the edge so early and she's so quick from one turn to the next. 
That's really her strength on the upper part. And this already, this is right into the rhythm on this steep section. Moving nicely, quick through this combination. And then it's a couple of turns that kind of snake and bend around the hill. And then make this corner into the finish. Very relaxed work from Petalini. And Petalini, well, that is a big surprise. 0.86 off the pace. It certainly looked the part, technically sound and solid. Maybe not enough tempo or aggression. Yep, no, she was clean from start to finish. Hard to see exactly where she lost those eight tenths. And I think that'll just give her a little bit of frustration and hopefully a little fire into tomorrow's race. Yeah, good words. Really good words. Let's move on to another of the Italian rising stars, Beatrice Sola. 12th quickest after the first run. And it'll be interesting to see how the coaches perceive some of their performers runs to transmit some valuable information to their athletes because i don't think we've seen anybody completely nail this top section yet yeah it's good skiing here good strong good fluid skiing over her skis well but when she's in touch isn't she on the first split and she's close to our leaders this is good charge here. You can really see the shoulders driving down the middle of the turn between the gates, trying to take as much speed down that steep section. Yeah, good green light at the halfway point. 900's right side of the clock. This will take it very close indeed. Oh, Beatrice Soller, another skier. That struggles with that race line. Or is it the tempo? I think they're giving these offset turns on the last pitch, Britt. Maybe a little too much respect We'll see the likes of uh, Schlocker and uh, Leona Popovich just smash through those. And um, I think some of the lesser experienced skiers rounding off the turn just a little too much. Let's see how the American racer, Lila Lapana. She holds dual citizenship, born in uh, Slovenia, but racing for the United States of America. Her, her father, Vyoko Lapana. Uh, he was a Slovenian team racer back in the day. He's had some victories and success on the Noram Tour. She's also picked up World Cup points at the top of the tree this season. Smooth, clean, error-free. And can she maintain this pace through these very wide offset turns on the steep pitch? Yeah, and I think it is, as you said, Nick, it's about taking those extra risks down here, not giving the course too much respect. Oh, and that's a straddle. And that is a shame. She'd got the green light at halfway, was nicely working her way down the steep pitch. Here's the reverse camera angle, Britt. It's millimetres when it comes to slalom racing at this level. And she just clipped it a little too tight, looking for that extra speed going into the flush. Yeah, and it's just millimetres. She was so precise with the skis at the gate on the turns before and just tried to cut it in a little bit too close on that rhythm change. Now, oh, what a shame for the American. Switzerland are next in the gate. This is Elena Stufel. Tenth quickest from the first run. We're getting into the business end of this uh, Europa Cup slalom now. Experienced racer, 27 years of age. Three World Cup point scores this season. It wouldn't be a surprise here for Elena to find top gear challenge the young Austrian leader and try and put the heat on the nine skiers to follow her. She's pushing hard on this opening section. You can see the angles. Watch the shins as they roll left to right. But here's this transition. Keep the shoulders and the upper body driving down the middle of the corridor and the feet just move dynamic, nice and dynamic, left to right. It's a good pace and tempo. The Swiss skier dives across the line. Oh, she misses it as well. 0.49. Now, this was the question mark at the start of this first run. These very long off-swing turns will cause a rut earlier rather than later. What's very interesting here, Britt, is that Lisa Huraga leads for Austria and her Austrian coach set the second run. Now, let's go to uh, Bianca Bakevestov. This is a very important race for this uh, young Norwegian lady. She's lying third in the Europa Cup slalom standings uh, for this season. She's been on the podium 
runner-up twice in Zelamze, lost to uh, Europa Cup slaloms on the women's tour on the 12th and 13th of January. She's got the taste of the podium. Looking to get ahead of Nicole Good here, who uh, leads the slalom tour standing on the women's B tour. Yeah, she's an excellent advantage at the interval, so it's really about taking that speed from the flats. She's getting a little bit late and low, but in the line, but she moves quick into the next turn. Here's the quick oh, combination. She's got... oh. oh, and she had it all in her hands there. And it looked to be in complete control, but a little bit like the American La Pana. Just pinched the line a little too tight, and there goes the straddle. Oh, yeah, that's a real shame, because she did have an excellent run going. Here's the air and the disqualification. It's that top gate of the combination there. The rhythm changes, just got a little bit ahead of herself, perhaps, and you want to cut that turn in. And Westhoff, who's in the chase for the slalom uh, title, this is round six of ten. And this is the current slalom tour leader, uh, Nicole Good of uh, Switzerland, uh, 25 years of age. She's also hit the top 10 on the Women's World Cup Tour. And let's see if uh, Nicole can take full advantage. It's a double header this weekend. Remember, there's a lot of points up for grabs with two back-to-back -back slaloms. And this is confident, smooth and very nice on the upper section. 0.34, right side of the clock at the halfway point. Yeah, excellent opening section. She has had a spectacular season. And every time she pushes out of the gate, I can't wait to see what she does because she's so dynamic over the skis but has that confidence to really take the risks without any hesitation. One win, three podiums this season, and it's another fine performance from Nicole Good. She's gone into second spot. Well, uh, Huraga will be delighted to have uh, stayed ahead of the tour leader, but it's a rock-solid point score with others in the title chase picking up the DNF. That rut is forcing them to take a slower, rounder racing line. It's not going to be easy for the fastest skiers from the first leg. Uh, Clarisse Brechet, seventh fastest from the first leg. That rut on gates two, three and four is starting to deepen and on the closing turns as well. Yeah, you can see it starting to form now. So these races are going to have to take a slightly different tactical uh, approach to the course, but still keeping that aggression, trying to look for speed. Here's the quicker set section across the flats where you have to be ahead of the course and really bring speed into this pitch. Oh, and she gets a little bit tripped up. Before that delay gate, throwing her out of the rhythm. She's a tough cookie. An amazing performance in slalom four on the Women's World Cup Tour. She went from bib number 69 to take 21st position. But I think the errors will take their toll. Yes, 10th position, 0.74 off the pace. Very difficult to keep the turn clean and keep the line as direct as possible. Sunshine's been on this race piece all day. The snow has softened. The ruts are deepening. Wonderful recovery. Look how off balance she is. But she's yeah, off the pace. Pushed break. into the inside ski right as that transition happened. Uh, yeah, and just falling back a few too many places here in the second run. Lisa Huraga still leads. Six to go. This is the British number one, Charlie Guest. Now, new coach this season, Reini Fernsebner. New serviceman, Ali Morton, sponsored by Quinn Estates. Fresh off the back of a podium in the first of the doubleheader Europa Cups in Zelemze in early January. Few errors on the top turns, but now the British number one goes through the gears. Big green light, 0.57 up. Yeah, that's an excellent advantage she's created in the opening turns. Really good dynamic turns here. She's really letting it go, taking those little bit of risks, not hesitating, nice and clean through that combination there. Gets through there safely. She struggled with joint pain in the early part of the season, but this is Charlie Guest on form. The British ski team go top of the table by 0.37. Great performance from Charlie. Yeah, that was a fantastic ski start to finish. She really did what she needed to do on the opening flats, but made that adjustment, that change into the steeps to keep her speed. And that adds the pressure to the last five in the challenge for this uh, 
Europa Cup slalom today. Surely that's good enough for a spot on the podium. But there are five with an advantage, a time advantage over Charlie Guest from that first leg to challenge. Charlie takes the leader's chair. Marion Chevrier out on course. Another young lady with uh, three World Cup point scores. That's three top 30 results against her name on the A-Tour this season, including a top 20 in Flacco, dancing very light and precise through these opening turns. This is good work from the French racer. Yeah, very clean up here in the opening section, but just ever so slightly off the pace. Eight hundredths of a second back, and there goes a little bit wide. Has to hold on to that turn a little bit longer on the red gate at the top of the pitch. Yeah, the rut is taking its uh, effect, isn't it? It's forcing her onto the tail of the skis as well. There's another little mistake, and the uh, temps are slipping away. Charlie Guest holds her breath. Chevrier drops into fifth position. 0.64. Small errors on the last part of the challenge, but costly for the French challenger. Great Britain still lead. Yeah, that's all it was. A couple of costly errors. It's that rut that's forming, having to hold on to the turn a little bit longer in a few spots. Charlie Guest waits and watches on. Big star from the Wins World Cup next in the gate. This is uh, Slovenia's Andrea Schlocker. A World Cup winner. Fourth fastest after the first run. She's here to build confidence and keep her race skills sharp and ready to rumble for the next stop on the Women's World Cup Tour, 9th and 10th of March in Ore, Sweden. And look at Schlocker go through the gears here. Lovely skill and technique, 0.35, the right side of the clock. Oh, but there is the big mistake from the Slovenian number one. Yeah, now is where she needs to reset. That little mistake, she's still getting thrown onto the tails ever so slightly, but it's the timing, getting that timing and rhythm back. That was nice through the combination. Just a few more gates as she bends around the corner. Has she refound the lead? And Schlocker's oh. thrown it away. 1.11 off the pace. Oh, what a disappointment for Schlocker. Till this point in the challenge, she was on fire, could do nothing wrong. Then she gets caught in the rut, the soft snow on the outside of the rut, scrubs off all the speed, and there's not enough time or length in the slope to catch it up. Oh, yeah, that was an unfortunate error at an unfortunate spot in this run where it goes from the flats to that steep section. Charlie Guest leads blending. for the British ski team. Three to go. Now, here we go with uh, Emilia Mondinelli. Ooh, she too looks a little nervous in those opening turns. Finally gets control of the butterflies and starts to go about her business. Yeah, there we go. Took a few gates to get into the rhythm. Still getting thrown around ever so slightly. You can see the upper body getting pushed around. But the feet are moving quick across the flats here. Great words, Brit. Accuracy on that racing line, setting up high and early before the rut, trying to grip on the wall to try and maintain that speed. Half a second clear with the green light coming into the closeout now, around the dog leg turn, finishes within her sights. And Mondinelli for Italy has gone oh. second. Charlie Guest is guaranteed a place on the podium, potentially her second Europa Cup podium of the season. Emilia Mondinelli into runner up position. Well, we saw her, she skied the opening part so clean and well, but just not able to match the lower part of the course to that of Charlie Guest. Oh, Charlie Guest cannot believe it. From sixth position, still leading, two to go. France and Croatia left at the top of the race piece here in Malbourne, Liechtenstein. This uh, Nakstas. Uh, Slope really has tested the best, but it's Marie Lemieux who's out on track. 22-year-old from Courchevel, a PB of 11th on the World Cup Tour, and in the sixth Europa Cup of the season, is charging, risking everything. Yeah, and that's what it's going to take to pull 
the speed down this opening section and take the lead by the finish. You have to take those wrists up here. Don't hold back in any way and transition well from the flats to the steeps here. Ooh, a little bit off, but gets the rhythm back right away. He's uh, got the red light. Remember, the red light tells us the skier on screen is off the pace. Green light tells us that she's ahead. And Marie Lemieux really does need to now push and push hard. The French skier has missed it and misses the podium. Marie Lemieux into fourth position. Charlie Guest has to watch just one more skier to see if she has won this Europa Cup competition. Day one of two here in Melbourne, Liechtenstein. The opening turn seemed to unsettle the French racer on screen and she struggled to recover. So will the win today go to Great Britain or will it go to Croatia? Leona Popovic. Second in round two of the Women's World Cup tour this season. A true class act using this Europa Cup as a warm-up for the next rounds on the World Cup tour. 9th and 10th of March in Ore, Sweden. I love the way, Brit. She gets that early pressure. Ooh, just Ooh. steals a little too much acceleration out of the turn. But the recovery was like lightning. Yeah, there's the skills, the strong skills she has because she's gotten herself into trouble on a couple of spots already, but it's how quickly she recovers and gets that pressure onto the new ski early in the turn and right back into rhythm. Ooh, and there she's getting thrown a little bit wide. Well, she's got 1.16 seconds advantage over Charlie Guest, who was only sixth after the first run, but this is not perfect by a long way from Popovic as she powers her way through the closing turns. Croatia or Great Britain, and it is Croatia. Leo! Leona Popovic winning the sixth Europa Cup slalom of the season. A great performance from Charlie Guest of Great Britain. Sixth to runner-up position. Charlie's best result of the season. But some skillful skiing here from Leona Britt with some spectacular recovery moves. Yeah, really showing her skills and the strength that she has in her slalom skiing at the moment because those were some errors that really would have thrown many out of the course and it didn't phase her in any way at all. That is quite spectacular. This is natural winter snow, no ice, salt or cement put into the race piece today. And uh, Leona Popovic, remember, started her day with bib number 20 and has battled bravely in the rats and bumps on both runs to win this sixth Europa Cup slalom of the season. It's the best result of the tour so far for Charlie Guest, taking runner-up spot. Emilia Mondinelli will be happy with her performance as well in uh, third position, a PB for the Italian. But for me today, Leona Popovic of Croatia was the class act out on the piste and the deserved winner in the first of two Europa Cup slaloms from Melbourne in Liechtenstein. Well, what a podium that has turned out to be. Croatia, Great Britain and Italy. Uh, PBs for Charlie Guest and Mondinelli this season. And uh, Leona Popovic just giving the ladies of the Europa Cup tour a glimpse of how sharp and quick you need to be to strike for a podium on the World Cup. Fantastic racing here in Liechtenstein. And I have to say, Brit, I could watch Leona Popovic time and time again. A truly skillful skier and different skill set tested today than perhaps you will need on the, the Europa Cup Tour, uh, the World Cup Tour in Ore early next month. Great skiing from Leona, and I'm hoping that uh, we'll be able to get a quick interview from Popovic, get her thoughts and feelings on that performance. Uh, that They'll go on from 31 to 60, as is the uh, rule. Actually, I think there's only 58 um, to take us to the end of the race. But there, with the flower ceremony, none of these later starters will have the uh, time, pace, or performance to better those podium positions leona popovic top spot runner-up charlie guest to go with her third position 
uh, from uh, Zelamze. Slowly but surely, Charlie's getting her season right back on track. And as we said on our first run earlier today, uh, there's another race to come here tomorrow. A chance for Charlie Guest. I hope Leona Popovich stays for tomorrow's race. There's no reason why she shouldn't. Um, Charlie Guest will be buzzing with confidence just half a second uh, behind uh, Leona Popovich, um, who's missed a few World Cup races through a niggling injury, but she's currently ranked 14th in the World Cup slalom standings, and that will really give a buzz to uh, Charlie. And the similar story for Emilia Mondinelli, uh, the uh, Italian picking up her first uh, Europa Cup podium performance of the season. Hi, Leona. Let's hear what How Leona do you has feel to say. After this race and your win. Uh, yeah, I feel very happy. This is also my first Europa Cup win, so it's it's also special for me. And uh, the snow was here really good, and the conditions were maybe a little bit harder in the second round, but I'm happy to manage it all. Super. Congratulations again for you, and good luck for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, there's the little tip that we were hoping for. The interviewer telling us that uh, uh, Leona will be back. Um, can you please do it in Croatian as well? And let's just, just, just what allow it Leona just to give us a few words in her mother tongue. Leona is actually Croatian. And another clear indication on how important the Europa Cup Tour is. She's never won a Europa Cup. She's been second on the World Cup, never won a Europa Cup race. And it means a huge amount to Leona today, Britt. We're going to work our way through from the start numbers from uh, 31 through to 58th position. Uh, on the Europa Cup, uh, they get a second run opportunity if you finish in the uh, top 60. But let's quickly talk a little bit about Leona. A second on the World Cup Tour, but all smiles for winning a Beatle race today. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, to, to have her first win here and just showing us the value in this the Europe Cup Tour and that it is a stepping stone, but also a place to come back from the World Cup, build confidence, work on things, and just hone in your racing skills. Let's talk a little bit about Charlie Guess. She must be buzzing. 0.52 of a second behind a top 15 ranked World Cup racer. I think this is the uh, confidence boost that Charlie was looking for. We know she's been very fast on the World Cup Tour before. Just hasn't put two runs together. Um, Charlie will be buzzing tomorrow, I'm sure. Would you agree? I would absolutely agree. That was a very courageous ski, and it was going to take something like that to really move up the rankings in the second round because this hill here, this course, really challenges all the skills of the slalom skier. And then Emilia Mondinelli, a young Italian lady that claims her first uh, Europa Cup podium of this season. Uh, Lisa Horaga fastest second run time um she'll be wishing she'd ski a little quicker on the first leg but uh, i like the way austrian coach sets a very different course austrian athlete uh, records the fastest time of the second leg yeah it's nice when it works out that way of course your, your coach sets the course and you set the fastest time but she skied exceptionally well and moved up i think 15 spots into that fourth place position so She'll go into tomorrow with a lot of confidence from today's race. Absolutely. Didn't quite go the way that we were hoping for the French ladies uh, on the, the second reg. Lemieux dropping down to fifth. Uh, Chevrier down to eighth. Uh, was it the type of course that was set on the second leg? Or that's just the way the state of play often rolls? Yeah, it was. A, it was. I think it was a blend because it was a trickier course in the second run. The French girls really got um, got it right on the first run, and it just the tactics weren't there, and, and it wasn't quite there on the second run. And yeah, tough to see them drop drop off and uh, move back some places because they were really challenging the top spots after the first run. Tell us a little bit what happens uh, tonight back at the team hotel. Athlete-coach relationship. Britt, you've been in uh, this position many times before. Two races in one weekend. It either goes not the way you wanted it to, or like Charlie guessed, it's gone exactly what she was hoping for. Uh, what do they do next? How does the process unfold after day one heading into day two? 
I think the most important with uh, two two days of racing on the same hill is to just stay stay within yourself, stay, stay focused on what you can control. You'll go back, you'll do the same routine that you would after every race, whether you've had a good result or you didn't have the resu- result that you wanted. You want to look at video, you'll do your recovery, you'll maybe you know, relax, enjoy a little bit, and just then start to mentally prepare for tomorrow's race. If you haven't had the race you wanted, you'll just pay attention to a few details and make note of that to make those changes into tomorrow's race. And then a final question before we get back to these later runners and, and look at their technique and give some uh, analysis. Uh, I think Malbun here in uh, Liechtenstein has uh, taken full advantage of the colder temperatures that seem to be coming back to the Alps. It was a natural snow race. It didn't look like there was too much. And I really like the way that winter snow tests the skills of the athletes, particularly when we reverse the top 30. Yeah, it's been an, an excellent first day of racing. We saw the ruts build a little bit, but they almost held. They got to a certain groove, and then it stayed. So really, I mean, Bib 66 made it into the top 30 after the first run and had an excellent finish here today. So uh, really keeping the track nice and fair and even for the whole field. And like you said, giving that real feel winter snow um, conditions for the for the racers. Yeah, once again, congratulations to the LOC, the local organizing committee here in uh, Malbun. A, a fantastic many thanks to Sunrise, the sponsors of this event as well, where they've put on a, a, a tremendous show um, as we just work our way through the, the final skiers and before we come to the end of this broadcast. I must remind you, we'll be back tomorrow as well with the second of the double slalom here in Liechtenstein. Um, Popovich, we heard from her interview that she'll be back looking for a second win. Uh, Charlie Guest, Mondinelli, uh, to name but a few. Uh, Garance Meyer from bib number 51, 37th position um, after the first run. And Britt, for you, what's the main focus for these skiers? They're not in the hunt for the podium. Um, is it to just learn the piece a little better for tomorrow's race for one or two, maybe a few points to grab. How difficult is it to keep the focus when you know you're not in the main body of the show, so to speak? Yeah, exactly. It is a little bit challenging because, as you said, the the race has happened already. Uh, For these racers at the back, it's about trying to see how close they can get to that top 30. Can they get into the top 30 and pick up a few Europa Cup points? And then... I think it's really important to take whatever the result is, however the day goes, to find the positives and build some confidence into the next race and build some belief because that extra little bit of belief, that's where you're going to find the extra speed and get that, get that mental edge to, to find some better results. Now, we've uh, talked today about how some of the world's best skiers come to the Europa Cup Tour, fine-tune, uh, prepare, set up, uh, psychological... Uh, few words from you and Andrea Schlocker. She was flying until she picked up that poor performance. Uh, What goes through the mind of a a top-ranked racer? They come back down to the Beetle and it goes wrong. From hero to zero. From uh, fourth position to 15th position by the end of the day for Andrea. Well, I think for Andrea, she skied so well and needs to take some confidence in that. She has done nothing wrong with her skiing. It was just a small error, and it shows the strength of this field here at the Europa Cup, at this Europa Cup event and at the Europa Cup level. Um, You always get World Cup racers that are coming back and forth a little bit and trying to build confidence, so uh, she can just focus on what she's already doing and I think just put today's performance aside and and build for tomorrow. She certainly looked the part, didn't she? You could spot the top ranked racers not only with their technique but with their confidence and their race execution. It's pretty easy to spot who are the top dogs and who are not uh, even on the on, on the Europa Cup tour. Yeah, I think that's exactly it as you said it's the race execution. That ability to take what you tr- what, how you train and the speed that you can train at and bring it in to the race environment and that timing, just have that timing and that accuracy there with the feet uh, to, be- to really build that speed. And, and uh, it was exciting to see. It was some excellent racing here. No, I, I totally agree. And uh, for me, I was uh, so happy to see Leona Popovic, our Croatian winner here today, 
uh, genuinely thrilled with winning on uh, the Europa Cup Tour. She's a lady that many are tipping for the World Cup slalom title in uh, years to come. But uh, she really enjoyed it out there and took a huge amount of satisfaction from her victory today. Yeah, it was really great to see. And if I think back to my race in my career, a win was a win. It didn't matter if it was a win at a fist race, a win at uh, Europa Cup level. That uh, any, Every time that I could win a race, I took that confidence and I took that into the next race that I did, no matter what level, if I was going to a World Cup next. So, yeah, this, this win here today means a lot for Popovich. And we're looking at the course very carefully here. This is a, a, a Valentina Fertscheller for Austria, skiing into 36th position. Uh, our expert analyst in the commentary box, uh, uh, Britt Yannick, who's with us today, courtesy of the uh, Apex Academy in uh, Tina in France, has said that there's still a chance for some of these later numbers to break into the top 30, to potentially pick up a few points. And uh, here's uh, a youngster, uh, Madeleine Beck, finishing 40th off the first run, local skier here for Liechtenstein, and uh, still with the chance of uh, picking off a few points. I love those words, no matter what the race is, a win is a win. And uh, we can clearly see from today's racing that Leona Popovich has uh, taken a huge amount of confidence and enjoyment from just pipping Charlie Guest of uh, the British ski team, Britain's top female skier on tour, by 0.52 of a second, Emilia Mondinelli for the Italian team third, Jorega is a four. Marie Lemieux uh, taking fifth position now. Stay with us till the end of this race because we'll bring you up to date with all of the slalom and overall tour standings for the women's uh, Europa Cup before uh, we sign off. Jalet for France. 45th position for Annabelle after the first run. And for these youngsters and for the skiers that uh, are moving up to the Europa Cup Tour from the FIS series, which for many is where it all begins. Uh, Jalet, 4.44 off the pace, just missing the top 30 in 32nd position. Now, if we were on the World Cup Tour, there would be no race at all for those skiers missing the top 30 cut. But on Europa Cup, they go to 60. We only got to 58 on that tough first run as Astrid Hedin. Again, with her focus clearly on trying to hit the top 30 today. Yeah, and I think it's important to see with these later starters. Oh, and there's a little air and she's out. But they're getting sections of the course fast. And then it's just a matter of blending all those sections together to have that complete fast race run. Well, this is the uh, Spanish racer. Arieta Rodriguez Eleski. My Spanish isn't that good. I'm not sure I've got that pronunciation correct. I apologize to any Spanish viewers right now. Eleski. Anyway, we'll keep trying. 41st position um, for Arieta. Spanish team enjoying form on the Men's World Cup. It's been a while since we've seen Carolina Castillo dominate the women's giant slalom tour she was such a brilliant racer and of course Britt one of your best friends <laughs> yes yeah she's a fantastic competitor as well without making Brit blush coached by Brit's husband uh, Mark Tilston to those uh, World Cup victories and of course uh, Mark uh, currently coaching the men's team head coach for the American team that's a story that we've uh, enjoyed sharing with you throughout this season. Uh, Germany are next on course. Uh, Charlotte Grandinger. As you can see with these later starters, the, the groove, the rut is definitely there. And the tactics are a little bit different as you start lower down the, the start list. You need to set that edge, set the ski into that groove and then work it through the whole turn. Big difference between the top positions and the top 35.25 seconds off the pace for Grandinger. And uh, just missing that top 30 point scoring position. Uh, Maria. No, my apologies. This is Koskinen of Finland. Next on course, uh, Celia. 
Pojulainen, fastest for the Finns in 14th position. It's that Niedendorfer that's next on course. Two on course at the same time to get through the high numbers. Koskinen, 41st position with Maria uh, Niedendorfer on track now on the upper part of the challenge for Austria. Right, and just having to go through that combination backwards. She got a little bit late. You saw the rut push her out of the course. Well, she's done well to stay in the course, but that having to go through the combination the wrong way has caused her to put the brakes on a little bit on the exit. Yeah, you could clearly see, couldn't you, how it took off so much pace and uh, power of the performance. Right of your screens is the Italian Francesca Caroli. That's a shame for Niedendorfer, down to 43rd position. Ooh, troubles for the Italian. And Caroli picks up a, uh, a DNF, did not finish. Just a few to go before this uh, race will be in the book. Skiing from bib number 71, this is Nadine Hundegger. Oh, three gates in. That is very disappointing. What a shame. And whilst the snow looks to be quite soft, it's still firm and icy underfoot at the bottom of that rut. Uh, Axel Moulin for Belgium next on course. Kim Van Roosel, best of the Belgium racers in today's Europa Cup race. 12th position, not a bad result for Kim. Started with Bib 66 to make the top 15. I think I'd put her down as uh, my warrior of the day. Absolutely, she skied incredibly well. That, that grit and charge to get into that top 30 in the first run. Well, Molin, another skier joining the list of uh, DNF. In Holland, young Norwegian skier next on course. Tough for the late runners now. The sun's been on this piece all day. That rut is deep. The set, as we've already described from the Austrian, was good for the earlier numbers. Certainly helped his athlete at Lisa Choraga. But for the last remaining skiers, very difficult indeed. Just a few to go. Four left to challenge Leanne Bondaire for Latvia 55th after the first run and you can just see a little bit here the rut is there so it's almost dictating where you can and can't ski and if you get a little bit late in the line you it's so much harder to get back into the course because that rut wants to push you out of the track. Six point four three off the pace. At right of your screen, you see uh, Gwyneth Tenra for Luxembourg. Now. Uh, Gwyneth again. Actually finding a good rhythm here. She's uh, relaxed, getting that ski into the rut. But there's the big mistake. And this really is the sting in the tail for this uh, course set. Very technical on the steepest part of the piece. Uh, Michael Rahn. And I can imagine, Britt, that the Austrian coach has just wanted to take it up a next level. Again, the difference between FIS, Europa Cup, and then to World Cup is the technicality of the course set and the pattern of turns. Yeah, absolutely. The athletes getting challenged here on the second run, just with those subtle rhythm changes. It isn't straightforward. You have to have inspected well to see where that rhythm changes, uh, where it occurs. Uh, and then take as much speed as you can out of that quarter of gates. 
Uh, Julia Flatcher for the Austrian team is the penultimate skier on course today. And uh, not chasing the top positions, but so much of this level of competition is all about confidence. And that's what the coaches will be hoping to achieve here today for those skiers that have uh, lost the pace and uh, are off the clock today, to be honest. But um, it's amazing how just one confidence run, clean, error-free, can help you on that perform performance curve. And here's the last skier and one of the youngest in the race at just 16 years of age. This is Isabella Schmelmer. Oh, Schmelmer. Seems to be the policy for the German Federation right now with their youngster Emma Eicher on the tour. They want him in the deep end nice and early. And a stark contrast to the Norwegians who are happy to bring their racers to the World Cup Tour at a much uh, later age. But uh, the youngster picks up a DNF and uh, this sixth Europa Cup in Melbourne, Liechtenstein on the women's tour is official. Congratulations to Leona Popovic of uh, Croatia with... Uh, a perfect performance and brilliant victory today. Charlie Guest from sixth position after the first run, taking second spot. And Mondinelli of Italy claiming her first podium of the Europa Cup Tour for 2024 in third position. Slalom Tour leader Nicole Good will be taking a look very closely at the standings as we will in just a short while to see whether she holds top position. But here's Charlie Guest. Very brave performance on the second leg. Slowly but surely. Getting her confidence where she needs it. It wasn't perfect. There were a few clear errors, but it's the speed of recovery that is one of the key skills for the slalom racer. Similar story for Leona Popovic. It wasn't perfect from top to bottom, but when the mistake creeps in, it's forgotten about within a split second. The correction is made with lightning speed to keep that pace and momentum flowing all the way to the finish line. Great skiing from Popovich today. First Europe, Europa Cup victory for Leona Popovich. Second podium of the season for Charlie Guest. Here's the confirmation of the result. Popovic Guest, Mondinelli, Choraga Lemur, Good, Ling and Marion Chevrier uh, making up the top eight. Kim Van Roosel from a start number of 66, 12th position. Big point score today for the Belgium number one. Caitlin McFarlane, 17th. The French didn't quite get the hang of this second run set after looking so strong after the first run. And Annette Belfron of Italy taking 30th position and the last point on offer in the Europa Cup Beatles standings today. Well, as we said earlier, congratulations to your second place in today's race. How do you like it here in Malbun and Liechtenstein? Are you here for the first time? Um, so yeah, no, this is not my first time here. I've um, throughout my, my younger years doing first races, I've spent a lot of time here. So it was really cool to be back because it must be like six or seven years since I last competed here. Um, but yeah, no, it's really cool. It's nice to be back in some more wintry conditions. Um, the piece held up great for for all the well, for both runs, and so it could really attack the course. And uh, I had a really great time today. So thank you. Cool. Thank you, and good luck for tomorrow. Thanks very much. Cheers. And of course, what all the British ski racing fans are hoping place. for is Charlie Guest to go one better. Hi, Emilia. Let's Congratulations speak to, the third to place your third skier, place in today's Emilia race. Emilia Mondinelli. How um, did you think about the course? Are you happy with your performance? 
Oh yes, of course. Honestly, I don't have word. <laughs> It's my first European uh, podium, so no, I, I don't have uh, any word. <laughs> Okay, so we are very happy for you too. Congratulations again and good luck for tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye. A media training, I think, for young Emilia Mondinelli. No, felicissima di questa giornata. A little bit easier in Italian, maybe. Europa, quindi onestamente non ho assolutamente parole. È stato bellissimo e vediamo domani. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely delighted to have claimed her first European Cup podium. Emilia Mondinelli, Charlie Guest, will take on Leona Popovic live tomorrow here on Fist TV. Leona Popovic will start as the firm favourite. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Brit Yannick for her expert analyst today and many thanks for the Apex Academy uh, for loaning out their head of, of emissions for this competition. And on behalf of everyone from Fist TV, until tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. local time, for the first run of the second race here in Melbourne, Liechtenstein. I'd like to say many thanks for your company. It is goodbye for now.